Here's one out of Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock, Texas? <laughs> Yes, we are headed to the South Plains, West Texas, and we're going to talk a little Texas Tech Red Raiders. And of course, in the beginning, you heard uh, Lubbock references. Of course, Buddy Holly, the singer himself, is from Lubbock. In fact, there's a street in Lubbock named after him. Uh, but let's talk now about football. The Red Raiders, year number one under Cliff Kingsbury, not bad at all. Eight wins and five losses for a coach that, before Texas Tech, was the offensive coordinator for Kevin Sumlin at uh, Texas A&M. Had that explosive offense, a level one season two years ago with Kingsbury's offensive coordinator. Of course, he coached Johnny Manziel um, to a Heisman Trophy, first freshman ever to win the Heisman. Entering this season, year number two under uh, Cliff Kingsbury, he knows that there is some starting talent back, um, more on offense than on defense. But regardless of the 22 starters that Texas Tech has this season, only six are seniors. That's right, only six seniors out of 22 are upperclassmen. Eight juniors, seven sophomores, and a freshman. So in a lot of ways, this team is going to be young, but that could really benefit them down the road. Offensively, don't expect much from Tech as far as change. Okay, We know that they are predominantly a uh, throwing-type team. That was evident last season. Number two in the country when it came to passing yardage. It's not a complete shock right there. And we know that you know the Red Raiders in recent years have had fantastic quarterbacks. Cliff Kingsbury himself quarterback at Texas Tech. You've had Brent Harrell, you've had B.J. Simmons, just to name a few. We'll see if Davis Webb over time can join that great fraternity of outstanding QBs for the Red Raiders. And if the bowl game last year against Arizona State is any indication, then... Tech fans may not miss Baker Mayfield, who also saw playing time last year for the Red Raiders and was Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year. They may not miss Mayfield as much, who now is with uh, Oklahoma, but won't play this year despite the fact that, unlike at Texas Tech, right now he's got a full scholarship at OU. He wasn't on full scholarship last year despite winning Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year. But Davis Webb is just as capable. As a matter of fact, put up similar numbers to uh, Mayfield. And we'll see if Webb can use these receivers that he has, which promises to be, from what I've heard, the fastest group of receivers the Red Raiders have had, which is saying a mouthful. Um, returning will be Jakeem Grant. We also have Bradley Marquez and also uh, Reginald Davis. But you do lose two dandies in veterans, um, Jason Morrow, and a guy that I thought had a real good career for the Red Raiders as well in Eric Ward. Running game, we we'll talked about the passing game being second in the country last season. Running game, just the opposite, not even in the top 110 nationwide. So we will see if DeAndre Washington, who now looks like will be the starter for Texas Tech, we'll see what he could do. Last season, both he and Kenny Williams saw about the same amount of rushing yardage, just barely under 500. Kenny Williams will be used in a different capacity on the team, which we'll talk about in a second. And Justin Stockton, four-star player out of San Antonio, they think could be the backup for DeAndre Washington from what I've heard. As far as the uh, offensive line, you return uh, three players, including the veteran at uh, guard, guy that should be all uh, Big 12, um, he's been all Big 12 honors before. Uh, that's the Raven Clark, and I think the guy is capable of playing in the NFL. He's seen action since his freshman year. And you also have uh, back Jerry Castor at a center, and right tackle is uh, Rashad Fortenberg. And we talked about the Raven Clark on one guard. How about the other one? Um, could very well be uh, Braylon Brown. And I'll be curious to see if Raven Clark is moved from guard to a uh, tackle because the left tackle position, by the way, is vacant. So we'll see how that works out. Well, defensively, Texas Tech, it's kind of like Texas A&M. A lot of offense, hardly any defense to show for it. But unlike A&M, who does have a lot of players back, Texas Tech does not. And they've really gone heavily toward the junior college route to see if they can find um, valuable front seven players. Some of those JUCO players did not even see spring practice action, and maybe that was a factor in the most recent depth charts in which uh, none of those junior college transfers are starting as far as the defensive line goes. But you do return uh, Brandon Jackson at defensive end. He can get pressure on the QB. Uh, Jackson Richards and uh, Demetrius Austin should occupy the rest of that defensive line. You'll see Texas Tech going with the three players on that defensive line because you'll see three linebackers 
and more times than often, more than four uh, defensive backs. It's just a scheme they play. It's kind of a swarming type defense that will take chances, which will pay off at times, but at times it could leave them susceptible against the pass. Um, the linebackers, um, you also return um, Sam um, Iguavin, Sam Iguavin, a veteran, and Kenny Williams. Talked about him earlier, running back last season, you know, shared time with DeAndre Washington, but they feel that he's more compatible as a uh, linebacker, so we'll see how that works out for uh, Kenny Williams, who should be able uh, to cover a lot of ground from the linebacker's position. Secondary, well, these guys are definitely going to be busy, and um, you have uh, Keenan Ward at a strong safety. The other safety, too, J.J. Gaines. The corners, well, we're going to see how these guys do. Uh, Tevin Madison, as well as uh, Justice Nelson. By the way, Madison is the uh, lone starting freshman on either side of the ball for the Red Raiders. So the secondary, this could be an area of concern for uh, Texas Tech because there's just really not a whole lot of experience. In fact, from the research I did, I don't see any full-time returning starters from a year ago. These guys might have played. Um, some of them might have played last year, but as far as full-time returning starters, I don't believe they have any in that secondary. But they will play a lot of five uh, defensive back sets um, this season. So at least they're prepared as far as number of defensive backs, but we'll see if the uh, Red Raider defense can just contain anybody. Um, it's been in the big Achilles heel, as you might know, in West Texas, uh, as far as getting to that level of winning the Big 12. The offense is capable. The defense hasn't always been so. Kicking game looks solid uh, with Ryan Buston entering now his senior year. You have him back, but the punter will be new. And speaking of freshmen, there, it looks like they're going to rely on Cameron Batston to return kicks. They uh, really feel good about that. The schedule for the Red Raiders, the non-conference schedule is about as easy as it gets. And, by the way, that occupies the first three games. Central Arkansas, you host them. Matter of fact, you go to uh, Texas El Paso for the second game. And the third game, you do have to play an SEC opponent. But if you're going to play one, it might as well be one that stinks, and that's Arkansas. So Arkansas will be in your backyard um, for the third non-conference game. So Texas does not leave uh, the Lone Star State for the first three games. But they will for the fourth one. And that is 12 days to prepare for Stillwater and Oklahoma State, a team that the Red Raiders have had fits trying to beat. The uh, Cowboys recently have owned that robbery. But it is on a Thursday night in Stillwater on national television. We'll see what gives there. First two um, non-conference, the first two conference games don't look too promising for the Red Raiders. Talking about Oklahoma State. But also, too, you got to play at Kansas State. And that team has been more of an Achilles heel uh, to this um Texas Tech team, and it seems anybody, they just can't figure out a way to beat the Wildcats, whether it's in Manhattan or in Lubbock. they got to play them in Manhattan this year. So you could start 0-2, but the next two look um, fairly winnable, hosting West Virginia and Kansas, a couple of the bottom feeders in the Big 12. And you go to Fort Worth to play TCU. That could be a swing game. Tech might be a favorite, but not a big one, I don't think. And then you host Texas, another team you struggled against. The team that you haven't done too bad against in recent years, Oklahoma, comes to Lubbock in mid-November, and as a Sooner fan, this game uh, really does have me concerned because Tech played OU tough last year, only lost by eight points, and you know the Sooners in the Bob Stevens era hasn't always fared well in the uh, city of Lubbock, although they did win there uh, two years ago handily. And you go to Iowa State, and you close the year out with your rivals from Baylor, that game at Jerry's World in Arlington to close the year out. Tech gets Two bye weeks, unlike a lot of teams in the Big 12 who'll get three. And the reason is because Tech's closing out their regular season um, in late November and not early December. Best case scenario could be a 9-3 and three season for Texas Tech. Their defense may not always uh, do their part, but offensively they are going to put points on the board. And to me, that's a guarantee when I look at their schedule of a uh, bowl season. And their offense does have the capability of pulling off an upset or two. Worst case scenario could be a six and six year, and that could be the case if the uh, ground game is completely non-existent, and if we see issues with that defensive line. I think it's got to begin with those guys because there's a lot of inexperience there, and that will make it very hard for that uh, secondary to do their part. So six and six could be worst case, but I'm looking at an eight and four season and five and four tied for fifth in the Big 12. Offensively, I think the team will again succeed through the air and I think Davis Webb will have an even better year because now it's not just him and Baker Mayfield it's now uh, Davis Webb and nobody else and defensively I can't pick this team to go any higher than than fifth just because 
the defense has to prove um, not so much that they can stop opponents, but that they can at least slow them down. And until that happens, Tip to me will always be a bowl team, but they're not going to be a major bowl team. That's my look at the Red Raiders. Another preview coming soon. Thanks, everyone.